Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight and this is your election command center. It's a special edition of Ghana Tonight. We have an extended version tonight. And coming up next, Americans are voting. In fact, when the stand has come to an end now in a tightly contested historic race, their vote will determine if America will put in the place their first female president since the country was founded or return a former president to the White House also, uh, being the second, or the, we'll, we'll say the first since the 19th century, for that matter. Now, before Election Day, more than 82 million persons had already cast their ballot. Now, with what we are saying now, this is your Election Command Center. And already joining me in the studio is Professor Enoch Enchi who is a governance and policy analyst, is the dean at the Academic City University, former president of the Ghanaian Association in Ohio, and also on Zoom right now. Joining us is Abdul Sani Rahman, who is our international affairs correspondent, connecting with us from New York. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on Ghana tonight. Thank you, Alfred. I'm always thrilled to be here. Thank you, Alfred. Great. And, and, and Sunny, start off with you. Um, you've been monitoring the election since uh, uh, the first ballot was cast um, earlier today. Now, tell me, what, what have the voters been telling you, interacting with them throughout the day? Well, Alfred, if you look at how voters are trooping to cast their ballot, essentially tells you how important this national exercise uh, is to them, and of course, looking at the issues that have taken center stage uh, in the campaigns, issues that voters are considering to decide who will be the next president of the United States. I can tell you, it's almost 6 p.m. here, the weather has changed, and uh, it's already dark. But you're seeing people uh, carrying family and friends to polling centers to cast their ballots, which tells you that it's not just a one man, one woman exercise. Everybody is involved in the exercise. People are bringing their children, people are bringing their friends and family to come and cast their ballots. Quite an important exercise for citizens of the United States. In terms of the issues, as you asked, uh, of course, immigration has been an important issue since the start of this campaign. Immigration, not just with the African community, as are widely supported. We know. Uh, there are a chunk of uh, natives from the Middle East, from Asia, from South America, from South Central America, who are also in the U.S., who have come through the southern borders and are looking to regularize, are seeking asylum and a whole lot of uh, immigration privileges. So that tells you that the issue of immigration is not only uh, an issue that Africans have interest in. A lot of people also here who have come from these territories that have indicated are also interested in immigration. Alfred, also, uh, Europe has an enormous interest in this election. If you look at what has been happening in terms of the global security, the issue of Middle East and, of course, NATO issues. We know former President Donald Trump, while in office uh, between 2017 and 2020, uh, pulled out the U.S. from NATO and uh, was asking that uh, the NATO members, especially those from Europe, Germany, and the rest, should be paying more, should be contributing more, just like the U.S. is doing, or else it's not going to fund NATO activities in as much as the fact that these are allies of the United States. So Europe is quite worried that if uh, former President Donald Trump returns to the White House, he may threaten to cut the substantial support that U.S. is giving to NATO, and right. that may undermine their security. Look at what's happening in Europe with the Russian-Ukraine war outfit. I see, and you, you spoke to some of these voters earlier today. I want to take a listen to them and what they told you. We're in. I think that our country, I want to say, has been like in a state of a downhill spiral for a really long time. Um, and I feel hopeful that the candidate that I voted for is going to change all that for us. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be a change overnight, but I'm saying it's a step in the right direction. Um, obviously, as a woman, that was a huge priority for me that our rights were protected. Um, and so this election to me means a difference between women having 
you know, protected rights over our reproductive system to like not having those rights. Um, I'm making sure people know about the New York Equal Rights Amendment um, to protect us here in this state, preserve the right to abortion and protect us from other forms of discrimination that we see sweeping across this nation. In America, our rights are under threat, and that's why I'm here to help protect our rights. It's absolutely no question that Kamala Harris is the choice for America and the world, because what happens in America affects the world. Donald Trump is a threat here and to you and all across the world. His term made the world less safe. We're seeing the repercussions of that globally. Uh, Abdul Sani, uh, stay with me. And, and I saw how Prof. Sano came to with us. And, and clearly, there's a lot that you can draw in terms of parallels and similarities between what's happening in the United States and, and Ghana, Prof. Sano came to because there, there's a hype if there's a from think, with things are going right now, possibility of either Kamala Harris becoming president, and that's going to be the first female president yes. of the most powerful nation on earth. Think about that. And then also, if Donald Trump becomes president, it's going to be the first former president yes. to have been re-elected since the 19th century. Yes. And we're looking at what's happening here in Ghana right now. And if the NDC wins, Professor Nana Jinopoko Ojiman becomes the first female vice president mm -hmm. in the history of Ghana. And if John Mahama wins, also becomes what? The first former president to seek re-election yes. and the win. We also have the vice president seeking election to be president. Kamala Harris is vice president seeking to be elected as president. There's a lot apart from other things that play out quite closely. But these are the issues at play right now and reason why there are millions of people out there to vote. Abortion, immigration, the economy, unemployment is practice is top on the banner for them. And it's top on the banner for Ghanaian voters as well. Jobs says it's all about economy, stupid, mm -hmm. is it not? Yes. Good. Now we see gun control, foreign policy, race as well. Let's start off with the issue of foreign policy. Donald Trump is n not a multilateralist, really. He's, he's an, an American true and true. He's looking to make a, America great again. Why should Ghanaians be concerned about this? Well, Shakespeare said that this above all, to thy own self, be true. So Trump is speaking the language of Americans inside their homes. When we talk about foreign policy, we're talking about strategy for interacting with other countries, international organizations. And clearly, Trump's strategy was that, you know, NATO Americans are withdrawing because they're paying a lot. If you come to UN, American pays a lot. So they thought that he thought, his team thought that Americans are doing a lot for the world. So let's come back and then help Americans and make America great again. And Americans bought into that idea that he's thinking about us instead of Democrats always taking our money and giving it to the poor countries. So he's speaking the language of most rich people. And that is why you even saw that Elon Musk, who is the richest person in the world, donated $1 million mm -hmm. to his campaign. Clearly, people don't know in that. In a number of states, he yes. gave $1 million to an yes. individual. Yes, but That's rich people most rich people are Republicans because mm. Republicans have policies that favors the rich, well, the business people. I see Mark Zuckerberg as well. Yes, his campaign, rich people. So I, I, anytime I, I go to American politics, I say that most rich people are Republicans. And it's because if you have your own businesses, they have policies, the political party of Republicans have policies that give tax cuts and tax breaks to the rich thinking that it's going to have a ripple effect on the poor when they employ the poor people. Well, but well, it hasn't worked. an outlier to that, isn't yes, it? Yes, it hasn't Bill, worked. Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates also supported Kamala Harris. Exactly. So they have money. But Kamala Harris is pushing, if you listen to those, most of the voters, she's pushing for the rights of women. And right. that is catching fire for her. And that so that, women that comes have their rights. So, yes, that, abortion. That, that, that abortion one. You know, how mm -hmm. they have targeted as an abortion, it is pro-choice, pro-life. If you look at the history of America, you know, Republicans always go for values when they are doing their policies. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it trans values. And then Democrats go for policies, but always values trans policies. And that is why Republicans have won more presidential races than Democrats. Right. So if you look at this issue, Republicans are looking at it like, you, you don't have to do an abortion when, you know, you have a baby in, in, because we need the babies. And That's it's right. not only that, but you know that there are churches that also support that. The Catholic Church, for instance. 
support that. So they, this is huge than people think. But I think that it's also an area that women think that we have our right to decide whether we want to keep our babies or abort the babies. If our lives are at risk or I'm, you know, I'm raped, and some of these issues, I don't want to keep the baby. So let me have my right to decide what I have to do. So not only that, when we talk about immigration, everybody's talking about immigration, immigration. Mm -hmm. Immigration is a big issue because we have a lot of illegal immigrants. Republicans are saying that come to America, but come legally. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of illegal, but I can tell you, Alfred, that if you go to Texas and some places, you have a lot of Mexicans coming in there, and then you can deport them and they'll be looking at you laughing because by next month, most of them They'll will be back. And, back. and everybody is Jose Garcia with one passport. So what do you do? See, so that has been a very big issue. But you also have a situation picking cherries, picking, you know, watermelons, picking a whole lot of farm work that these illegal immigrants have been doing it because the citizens have not been doing some of this work. You call a cleaner to come to your house and clean, and you see a Mexican or sometimes a black person coming mm -hmm. to do some of these for you. So when we talk about unemployment, the unemployment rate in America is now about 4%. So it's very low. But affordable housing has also been one of the issues of immigrants. How do we leave the American dream of buying homes? Right. You know, and being able to pay for it. But if you are receiving $12 an hour, $15 an hour, how are you able to take care of some of these bills? So immigration is a big issue. Abortion is a big issue. Unemployment, not that, because anywhere you find that uh, people are hiring, you can find a job to do. Mm. But I also think that gun control should be watched. Yes, gun control is, is actually should be watched num because number four on our radar. Yeah, We've had right. a lot of high school children going to schools with guns and then shooting and killing, and all that parents can do is to go and cry, mm. and then these young kids are buried. And I think that Democrats are doing a great job about background checks, you know, E-Verify, mm -hmm and making sure that these kids are not going to school with guns. So that is an issue that we should check. But lastly, the foreign policy issue that you raised about, yeah. I think highly that Trump, we've seen him before and the way he handles the foreign policies. He drew the whole world to himself in America, uh, behaved like Amer whatever America says should be right. fine now. And Europe didn't like that because mm -hmm. they, they have an alliance. If you look at international organizations that America has signed as a member, we all have equal rights. Even when you come to the United Nations, we have countries with veto powers. But even if you, if you talk about the foreign policy and its uh, focus on Africa, specifically Ghana, I mean, for, for the Democrats, you, whom you would say have a friendlier foreign policy to Africa, specifically Ghana, Donald Trump never stepped foot. In no, he Ghana, wouldn't waste his time. You know, and even on a continent. But then again, look at... Um, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, until recently, until two or three weeks ago, that's when he came to uh, visit Angola. Right? Yes. Kamala Harris was in was Ghana. Was in Ghana, yeah. You know, that's just a little over a year ago. Okay. Um, but then again, you would draw some conclusions based on the level of commitment and then also the policies to accelerate trade. Agua is one of the areas, is yes. it not, that we've seen trade play out. But Sunny, and this is where I bring you in, um, especially when it comes to the conversations amongst the people of color, the black community there, and um, the minority groups that you've been talking to them. What have they been telling you amongst these six areas that we, we looked at on our radar? Well, they, they are largely concerned about uh, economic opportunities. Of course, uh, if you have a chunk of your community having issues with uh, regularization as far as immigration is concerned, then of course you'll be concerned when uh, a candidate or a particular party is uh, whipping up support to drive you out of the country or, uh, because you don't have documentation in this. I mean, America cannot be uh, largely blamed for that. As uh, the other guests indicated in the, in the studio, they are not against immigration, the Republicans have been saying, but uh, if you look at the numbers and how they have treated issues of uh, immigration, illegal immigration, and issues of uh, those who come in to seek asylum, it's quite different from what they are preaching in this uh, last minute. In, in terms of uh, Agua, as you indicated, uh, not much will change, even if Donald Trump comes uh, into office. But the big question is, Donald Trump is promising to cut uh, tax this and offer a lot of tax relief to the big companies. And that means American economy will be losing some revenue.
but he has another plan to ramp up that NF, uh, I mean shortfall in, in, in revenue. Clearly, he's indicating that he's going to uh, roll out some taxes. He's going to tax uh, Chinese imports and others that are, uh, that are coming to the United States. And, I mean, he did that well when he was in office. And that right. resulted in some serious global trade. We saw the ramification on the global economy. Mm -hmm. We saw how prices skyrocketed in America and in China and other parts of the world. Right. So, clearly, uh, this policy or pledge that Donald Trump has to cut taxes would offer relief to uh, American businesses, the big big businesses. But those who have businesses outside America who are producing and importing and selling to the American economy, to the American consumers, may be at the brunt of this policy. And, and, and according to some research we we're going to be running into shortly, uh, you have a lot of the voters saying they easily understand Donald Trump's message. Because, for instance, with what is happening between Israel and, and Gaza, he says he's going to be able to solve that problem mm -hmm. in hours. It's not an issue for him, right? And he's talking about cutting on taxes. It is that kind of communication that is resonating with the voters and a number of them you've spoken to, is it not? Yes, certainly. The, the, they have the view that Kamala Harris is policy light, and that clearly showed in the debate that uh, kind of uh, sprang up her emergence as the, the candidate of, of the Democratic Party. Uh, there wasn't much policy conversation. It was some rhetoric and jabs at each other during that debate. Uh, that has largely continued. Donald Trump has clearly stated what he would do from the first day voted in the office, but uh, Kamala Harris also uh, even before Kamala Harris, we know Donald Trump and his, the Republican Party have been saying that, hey, if Kamala Harris has something to offer the American people, she has been in office for the last four years as running mate uh, of, of, of Joe Biden. She should have uh, consulted and offered her advice in terms of addressing the challenges facing the American economy and the American middle class. So if she's not saying, give me the mantle and I'll do right. A, B, C, D, uh, the Republicans are saying they do not believe she has anything good to offer. She's going to continue with the Biden policy, according to them. But Kamala Harris also is selling a different message. She is saying she is going to depart from a lot of things in terms of how the economy is being managed. She's also promising to offer some tax relief to small businesses. And uh, let's not forget that if you look at the Democratic base, uh, they have a lot of the middle and lower class people who are supporting the Democrats. So she's targeting them with some sort of tax relief. They are small businesses, and that message is also selling. Right. Women-owned businesses, she is also promising them some tax relief. Right. And that is featuring into the momentum that she has gathered regarding women voters. We are being told by experts that largely white women voters would likely vote for Kamala Harris because of the reproductive health pledges she is making, right. and that may not inure to the benefits of Donald Trump. But in terms of clarity of message, clearly, Donald Trump is doing much better. And, and that point that you just made, and that's why I bring you in, Professor NG, because the Pew Research Institute, one of the mm -hmm. most respected independent think tanks that you can find in the world, has been putting some research to what you have just said. I'm going to run through it right now, just and I'll, I'll ask you a few questions on that matter. It's going to be on the screen in a bit. Now, they say that when, when it comes to the economy, you have a lot more of the voters saying, in fact, 93% of the people they poll having confidence that Donald Trump can solve the matters of the economy for them. Healthcare, 76% say Kamala Harris indeed will, will, will do a good job. Supreme Court appointments, and guess what? Supreme Court appointments is also an issue for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same for us, <laughs> an issue here in Ghana, right? Foreign policy, as you just mentioned, violent crime, that's gun control, you've just mentioned. Immigration, big issue there. A number of the voters, majority of them trust Donald Trump to deal with the matter of immigration effectively. And abortion, in fact, 67% of them trust Kamala Harris to deal with the abortion matter effectively and issues of rights and racial and ethnic inequality and also climate change. You know, Donald Trump's position on climate change is quite clear. Just about 11% of the voters say that they trust him to deal with climate change. 62% say they trust Kamala Harris to deal with climate change. And look at this. The matter of abortion, immigration, the economy. You see the red line 
represent the voters who say they have confidence in Donald Trump. Blue for Kamala Harris. And you'll see in between August and September, gradually, consistently, there's been an increase in those who say they believe in Donald Trump to do well when it comes to solving the issues of the economy. But then again, when it comes to abortion, look at the trend, the flip there. But take a look at this. There was a question that was asked about the voters. Now they say they have more confidence in Donald Trump in the economy and they say they have more confidence in Kamala Harris to deal with the matters of abortion. And the evidence is captured in this Pew Research Center um, that's a result of the poll. Now, they asked a question about the reduction in the, the influence of money in politics. And guess what? That is a conversation here in Ghana as well. They put it to the voters in the United States. Who do you trust to deal with the influence of money in the U.S. politics? And you have a number of them, majority of them saying they trust Kamala Harris to deal with that and also make good decisions about foreign policy. In fact, guess what? Trump had some plus six percentage points in there as well. And also on the issues about the economy, you see Donald Trump dominating. So it's quite clear what the direction is when it comes to um, thinking uh, for the electorates. The, we are thinking about electing a president. We are here thinking about how the president's policy is going to impact on all of us. When America coughs, you and I would have to catch a cold, <laughs> unfortunately. Alfred, the good news is that America is pregnant, and within a few hours, we're going to have a baby. Whether the baby will be a girl or a boy, Americans are going to decide. But if you look at the economy, Trump, when he was a president, did a good job with the economy. A lot of things happened in there where uh, gas prices, I'm talking about fuel, prices were so low, it went to as low as $1 per gallon. Mm -hmm. So uh, and there was some stipend money given. Uh, when you have the tax break, somehow, uh, because most Republicans are Trump pro-Trump, which is Republicans, they were really making the economy easier, paying over time and stuff like that. So companies were booming because they had got reduced taxes. And then the excess money that they are making, they were using it for other things, social responsibilities, giving back to society. So the economy was doing well during Trump's time. But there were other issues. Mm. If you look at the way Trump talked, in fact, there have been seven Nobel Prize economic award winners who has criticized Trump's economic policy. Mm. And then they said that, no, his policy, economic policy, is not going to help Americans. And guess what Trump says? Oh, these are old professors who are saying this. No, no, don't pay attention to them. And then people believe him. In fact, Trump has been making his way with a lot of things that he says. He pushed a lot of deep research aside, talks flatly about issues, what I call the unguarded talks. People don't probe him. But they that, leave him. Does that not resonate well with that? That is typical, typical Trump. American. Trump is being Trump. And most it, Americans are like that. You know, right. but he has his target group. If you look at the black population that we're talking about, it's about 14.5%. It's the white country. And because of that, most white people think that immigrants are taking away their country from them. The typical American will have one or two kids, and they are done. The immigrant is going to have five. The average Ghanaian community that I've been Ghana Association president with, and we meet a lot, will have a lot of... The average Ghanaian community have the average parent having about three, four kids. And if you go to Nigerians and, and Senegalese and other countries, they, have, they tend to have more kids. So these guys look at, you are coming here, your numbers are increasing, you are going to take you know, our people away. And it's not only that. If you go to Europe, they also have that population explosion of immigrants. Right. Canada alone, if you go to Toronto, now immigrants are 55%. So they are all scared about immigrants taking over their country. But the immigrants are also doing well. New York alone has more Ghanaian and Nigerian medical doctors than any other race. Hmm. So immigrants are going to school, helping the economy. They are really developing the economy. Right. But I think that when the issues that they talk about health care, Democrats have really done a good job on health care. And health care, not only affordable health care, right. but you talk about, you know, uh, Prescription drugs, which is very expensive. Drugs have become so expensive in America that people have been criticizing. Right. Because prescription drugs, if you look at the price mm -hmm. that the people are being charged, it's a lot. And then you talk about immigration, of course, Trump will leave because he's been talking about building a wall. He could not build the wall that he wanted to build during the first term of four years. He said he's going to build it, it's going to be big, and then it's going to be a thick one. Right. He talks like that. But the way Trump has been talking, if Harris had been talking the same way, she wouldn't have gone anywhere. She is deeper with issues. Trump, somebody who is a felon, 
many counts of felon. He filed for bankruptcy. But, 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 and but nobody would again, have done that and have gotten his the, way. There is re reflecting the, the, what you would say, the typical American's aspirations. And as you indicated, exactly, that, that's, but that's, that's, that's and who me, they are. Me, me, a middle-income person as a professor in America, if I'm filing for bankruptcy, there are processes that I have to go through. Okay. Now, you know, you, and even when you file for bankruptcy, there are many government projects that you can qualify for. But Trump has used the loophole in the system to fund for bankruptcy. So you're supposed to pay $25 million at the end of the year as taxes. You go give a, you know, an attorney $100,000 to file bankruptcy for you, and he saved the $25 million, and then use it to invest in his businesses. These are fraud deals. Well, it we, is not we, we, we cannot, we, 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 well, we cannot uh, also uh, make uh, that I, flat, I, flat I statement in there. I, so I, I'm the, telling the, you that the is what the system, the, well, I teach the, 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 that. The, 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 you know, the, the, anytime the, the you file for bankruptcy. The, 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 well, well, I get a point. I get the, 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 the system is, is potent enough to deal with it. Sonny? <laughs> I'm glad you talked yeah, about sorry, the system. Me, uh, yes, I, I, I said that, that, that's quite tricky, uh, the statement Prof is making, because in as much, uh, in as, much as the court has indicted uh, former President Donald Trump, uh, his team, uh, remains saying that uh, whatever happened is politically motivated. They are denying it, and we, we can certainly make those categorical statements. But uh, I think also the issue of uh, relief that Donald Trump is, is, is promising, as Doc, Doc has been indicating, is also the fact that uh, that should interest the, 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 the world economy, because if he goes ahead to press the tax buttons on importation, on manufacturing companies, on goods that come to America. The global economic system is becoming more integrated. We are seeing even Ghanaian businesses having more access to the, the American economy through Agua, and a lot of entrepreneurs are doing a lot to survive and creating jobs and raking in revenue. So if you press on with more charges, more taxes as he's promising, that certainly would not augur well for small businesses, not just in Africa, but in China, in Europe, who are interested in accessing the American economy. But I, I thought of coming in uh, to uh, kind of water down the, the, the statement. In, in, the indeed, and, 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 and rightly so, as indicated earlier, as a system they have there is potent enough to deal with it and authenticate, whether it is fraudulent or otherwise. We cannot and also associate with that and, and, and independently verify those particular positions taking. It is one that Professor Enoch MP is convinced about, but we're here on your election command center looking at the issues at play and where you are, Sunny, as an international affairs correspondent, clearly um, it is not a resolute position that has been, as it were, pronounced upon as yet by the courts in the United States. And so we'll see how that also plays out, especially because the, 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 the Republicans and, and I, have vehemently de and, and denied Alfred, that. Alfred, quickly, before yes, we go. Alfred, uh, quickly before uh, Prof comes in, uh, we're also learning... We're, we're rounding in, up, in, yes. In, in the last uh, few hours that the camp of Donald Trump is putting pressure on him to prematurely declare the, the election. And uh, we've seen... Uh, misinformation on social media, which the U.S. authorities have been working to debunk. And uh, if it goes ahead to call the, the election even before vote counting ends, uh, so many places, a chunk of the voting centers, a chunk of the state, the key swing states, counting of ballot, ballot hasn't even started because polls have not closed. And uh, there, there is some concern in, in the country here that if it goes ahead with that plan, that certainly may cause confusion. That certainly may spark his base to think that he's been cheated in case the election goes south. And that could cause right. confusion in the country. Sonny, appreciate you on this one. And I know that you are with us every step of the way until the final declaration. So, appreciate you. Uh, Abdul Sonny Rahman is joining us from New York. Uh, in the United States. Also, to you, Professor Inokenji, thank you so much. And um, this is not the last of you. 